destruction of nature in our communities. If artificial intelligence could be repurposed to be in service of the planet and its people, it could be an incredible boon to humanity and to life on Earth. That's why I'm working on my current initiative, One Project. We want to work to collaborate with communities to develop scalable systems of economic cooperation and democracy, where the incentives are aligned with our values, are aligned with the sacred, are aligned with the good of the planet and its people. We're inspired by frontline communities like Rojava in Syria, the Zapatistas in Mexico, by our partners at the Center for Economic Democracy in Boston, Grassroots Economics in Kenya, and by the millions of people all over the world who are experimenting with or reviving or keeping alive ancient and novel practices like commoning, citizens' assemblies, participatory budgeting, and we're inspired by the potential of these artificial intelligence technologies that could enable ec ec ecological economic planning and participatory deliberation at global scale that was previously completely unimaginable. In moments of interconnectedness and feeling in touch with the joy and suffering of myself and others, I long for a more equitable society, for a democratic economy with participatory democracy, where governance is actually of, by, and for the people and for all of life. Where humanity collaborates as one team, working together on the one project to create a more beautiful world. Where we work to heal the history of colonialism, racism, patriarchy, and replace the profit imperative with systems that cultivate the sacred and the meaningful. But let's be real, how could we possibly do this? This kind of tremendous transformation would be daunting under all circumstances, let alone the ones we're actually under a massive hegemony of the existing system, trillions of dollars of markets, an enormous military-industrial complex highly invested in keeping the existing system alive. And the truth is, no one knows. But I'm inspired by something Ursula Le Guin says, we live in capitalism, its power seems inescapable, but so did the divine right of kings. In fact, I think it's no coincidence that the 18th century leaders that led the modern democracy movement against the divine right of kings were well known to be operating together in mystical societies. The mystical experience can inspire us to see the transformation that we need and have the courage to act on it. What can we do? We can hold the vision. We can move the Overton window. We can change the ideas of what's possible. Today, the modern political discourse is so trapped in such a modern, in such a, a tiny little band of what's considered possible. We can envision new visions, we can tell new stories, we can make art that expands the possibility space. We can live the change in the micro, we can experiment in our communities, our workplaces, our intimate relationships. We can join movements for change. We can build people power, engage in political processes that exist, and we can experiment in creating new political and economic processes, new modes that may be able to grow gradually, may take on a life of their own, or that may be just what we need in times of crisis and collapse. There's no reason to believe that things the way they are right now are stable. Within our lifetimes, we could easily see people lose faith in the dollar and currencies collapse. We could easily see systems we take for granted disappear. And in that power vacuum, the experiments that are succeeding and that are leading to people actually thriving could take root in a whole new way. We can leverage our particular talents. We can develop expertise in the systems we feel called to change. We can believe in the power of our own collaboration and what could emerge from the sum of our individual contributions. Emergent properties we just can't anticipate. My own experience being part of organizations that have had, that, that, that is, is unusual in having been part of three organizations that all went from a couple people in a room having an idea to within a fairly short period of time impacting the lives of millions and in some cases billions of people. And obviously the kind of transformation we're talking about today is very different and a technological one. But still, I think that especially in a modern, internet-connected world, change is possible at a speed and scale that ordinarily we just don't even fathom is possible. We don't know how to transform society, but that's what we can figure out together. For now, let's dream. When I experience my interconnectedness with life, how our fates are ever more intertwined, I see the need for better systems of global cooperation for us to wisely manage our planetary commons while fostering diverse ways of knowing and being. The opportunity for us to transition from seeing nations as these warring tribes caught in a prisoner's dilemma to seeing that the only true path to real national security and real national interests 
is the pursuit of planetary security and planetary well-being. When I experience my direct relationship with Earth as my mother, as my home, as Joanna Macy says, world as lover, world as self, that we are Earth's neurons and eyes and hands and tongues, when I feel her pain as my own, I dream of a truly ecological civilization, of a human economy that is not at odds with, but is an integral part of nature's ecology. I dream of an expansion of the rights of nature laws that have already proliferated in 24 countries, and the, and the creation of more practical systems, like accounting methods that track the reality of carbon with the rigor that we, today we track the fiction of money. <laughs> and when I experience non-duality, I dream of a culture that transcends polarization, how often seeming conflicts between left and right, between universal care and personal responsibility, between fairness and freedom, between progress and stability, that all of these are essential. They, in fact, depend on each other. You can't get one without the other. And I dream of a politics of listening, curiosity, and developing creative solutions. Pause one last time to give you a moment, eyes open or eyes closed, to consider what's a profound experience you've had that gives you a dream, that changes the way you want to see the world for yourself, for your loved ones, for future mm -hmm. generations. I invite you to share the stream later with each other, with other people at the conference, with your loved ones, because our dreams matter. Our minds shape our social structures, and our social structures shape our minds. This can be a downward spiral that creates more trauma and more destruction, or it can be a positive feedback loop of healing and evolution. Mystical experiences enable our minds to temporarily escape our social conditioning and from this place we can create new social conditions. The true integration of the wisdom of these experiences and medicines is a wholesale transformation of society toward love for each other and the planet. That is what I long for. In some deep sense, we are nature, we are the earth, and mystical experiences, the teachings of the plants, are earth waking us up to the potential to take care of ourselves, to take care of the planet and each other. We have so much more agency than we normally realize. The mystical experience that most inspires me is the one of awe and wonder. The one of breaking out of the ordinary day to day and realizing, wow, we're alive. There's a universe. There could have been nothing, but instead there is something and there is us and we're in it and we're here. And that is amazing. It is such a gift to be alive. And even with all the suffering and all the struggling, it is such a privilege. I'm here because this is a special community and I see the potential for us to be in solidarity, to recognize the power we have as a collective, to change the systems that shape our lives. Thank you.